the things I heard, and I want you guys to hear this in a big way, because I think that you never want to... And when someone has energy for an idea, you never want to stifle that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you want there to be a dose of realism so that they take the right steps. Sure. So some of the things I heard is Steve Scruggs' relationships of 30 years, and just I know Steve a little bit, um, but this guy has sewn into this community for a long time. The other word you said, um, high-skilled, high-wage team or uh, uh, members of the yeah. LADC. And so... As a young person, and I want to say this to anyone watching, because I, I have a lot of young people who are like, I'm straight out of college and I just want to do something awesome. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Sounds. I guess. I don't. Um, you don't have to have this yourself, but you have to have this on your team. Mm -hmm. And I think we think that we're just going to start something. Like, how many square feet is this down? 10,000. 10,000 square feet. She also mentioned she's got, she's had a $1 million for three year budget between in-kind donations for the space, build out for, and again, we'll show you some photos of this place. So a dose of realism is you don't have to have this, but it has to be on your team. You don't have to have this personally, but that has to be on your team. You don't have to have this, but you gotta have gray hairs on your team somehow. So the vision you have, whether it's something like this or anything, these are start, what I'm discovering as an emerging entrepreneur with the nonprofits I've worked on, I think people, they don't dream big enough. So yes, you might have an idea of a problem to solve, and that's fantastic, but I really encourage you to start expanding your vision to say, yeah, my vision's good enough to get people like that involved, and people like that involved, whoop, and people like that involved. So I just wanted you to, I wanted to call it out so that you can hear that that's actually the, the business behind the business. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that went on, you guys did your kind of research for this project for how long? Uh, City Business has been going on for 10 years. And not so specifically focused on entrepreneurs, yeah. but yeah, for Catapult, I mean, uh, years of, of seeing these spaces and figuring out, yes, these spaces are really, really cool and mm -hmm. they build community, but every community is different. And yeah. so knowing that, you know, we're different than New York or San Francisco or Chattanooga or Tampa or Orlando. Mm -hmm. And so, and we're, that's something we're constantly tweaking is how do we continue to make the space right for Lakeland and yeah. for Lakeland's people. So, in, so I want you to also hear is, so before the project got started, even, there's also budget for research and development. Mm. Flying around the country at Chattanooga, what was the name of the organization you guys visited in Chattanooga? Uh, there's several, Lamppost Group and mm. CoLab is another one. Right, uh, they've got a great, they've been super helpful for us. And, yeah. and really looking at what other people are doing and not reinventing the wheel sometimes is a really Ooh, good option. I'm guilty of that. <laughs> um, so two quick questions, then we'll wrap up because we're well beyond time. Yep. Um, is it sustainable? Yes, it is sustainable through our, through our community, for okay. community support. Um, the, good distinction. The membership dues or fees or tenant rent or whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. does not cover the cost um, of our budget, no. Mm -hmm. But gotcha. through the support of the community mm -hmm. um, and through those partnerships that we've built and those commitments, um, yeah, we're we have we have a two year project, two years left in our three year mm -hmm. project, um, but we have no doubts that we'll be able to continue this project yeah. for a long time. Well, in that uh, drawing on the contrast of the other organization I mentioned uh, earlier in the video, I think they might have to focus on the for-profit angle because they might not have that same mm. community drive and community yeah. support. So you or them or Meg or the contrasting company, they have to resource this somehow. Mm -hmm. And you guys were able to do that through social capital, basically, through Steve's relationships, through goodwill that LEDC has sown. And maybe the other person just hasn't had that in, in their yeah. history yet. Mm -hmm. uh, and they will with time. So maybe that for-profit model, and I'm only saying this to say maybe for-profit is where you're at because that might be how you need to crack a nut like this to bring something that is benefiting the community like mm -hmm. that. It works. It works for some <clears throat> communities. It works for a lot of communities. So just yeah. figuring out, um, figuring out what what works for you and yeah, the strategy. Yeah. Last question. Yeah. Um, what's in the near future for Catapult? <sighs> so that you can give away. <laughs> that you can give away. So this is the great thing is that Catapult has really become it's. You know, it's it's a good and a bad thing, but it's everything to everyone. Oh, so gosh. it's the only space for entrepreneurs to come right now. Mm -hmm. um, and you mentioned that there's one being built, so that's exciting. Um, and so what what really that means for the past year is that we've been able to pinpoint a lot of opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so figuring out, you know, we have this commissary kitchen that we didn't even talk about, but we've got food food based companies uh, building their companies and testing out their concepts, and we're super full. Mm -hmm. So there's a great opportunity there. Um, oh, to expand. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. And so there's um, there's a lot of things that we're just kind of in the research stage, honestly, right.
right now of figuring out mm -hmm. where does the opportunity lie and how do we build upon that? You know, we didn't know what this was going to look like a yeah. year ago. And so, again, just getting those feedback loops, asking people what do they like, what do they not like, how can we better serve you? Mm -hmm. um, so right now, figuring out where we have those great areas of opportunity and building upon them, that's what's next for Catapult. Wow. There's, I think there's some really exciting stuff coming up. Well, and for reference, I don't know if you can hear this in the audio there, but someone's like pounding, right? <laughs> and and we can hear this a little bit, but it's uh, it's Jen yep. uh, of Born and Bread, and she does all these awesome excellent pastries. So she's pounding that in the back kitchen, which is supposed to be a, like just a kitchen for, for people who want to throw their lunch in there, but it's the only space available because someone else is making cookies and pastries uh, for another business in, in the actual commissary kitchen. So I think you're talking about maybe expanding on that. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so real quick for people, where can people visit your CatapultLakeland.com. Okay, cool. And they can make donations? They can make donations online, yep. Um, okay. Is your 990s and all that stuff somewhere on the universe where they can find that? That's yes. all public stuff, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, absolutely. cool. On our website. <clears throat> okay, well, check it out. CatapultLakeland.com. This has been Meg Bellamy. Thank awesome. you. Thank you all. Um, and just keep watching for additional follow-up videos. If you have any questions for me or Meg, feel free to, to put them in the comments or emails or whatever it takes. Thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you soon.